Welcome to the quickest Convex crash course. If you are new to Convex or you've never used it before, this video is for you. I'm your professor, Michael, and in today's video, we're gonna go over Convex, all the core primitives. We're gonna spin up a project and you're going to learn how to go from zero to Convex build. Now, the tuition for this class is you just gotta like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. That would mean the world to me. Now, let's get into it. What is Convex? It's your complete backend. It's where you can write your server functions to interact with your database, it's where you write your schema file, where you can design your tables and the relationships between the tables. We give you these powerful client libraries that tie everything up together. So this diagram does it best. Say I have a React front end. In the React front end, I have access to my Convex backend via these client libraries. In this case, I have use query, use mutation, and use action. These client hooks allow me to interact with my Convex backend. And in my Convex backend, I have queries, mutations, and actions. These are the three core things that if you understand these things, you understand convex. There's often a phrase I share with people who are new to convex, and that phrase is being convex pilled. Oftentimes, it takes someone just to spin up a project with convex and to write some queries and mutations before they get the beauty of convex. And once they do, we refer to this phenomenon as being convex pilled. But going back to the server, you have queries, mutations, and actions. Queries allow you to read data from the database. Mutations allow you to write data to the database. And actions allow you to call third-party services like APIs. Now, what's cool about queries, mutations, and actions, and even the schema.ts, which is the file that allows you to define the schema of your database, all these things are code. So when I spin up a Convex project, the project using Convex, I literally have a folder named Convex, and under that folder is my entire backend. So everything in Convex is literally code. This is basically Terraform, but if it made sense and it was all written in TypeScript. And another thing about Convex that's super cool is by default, all this is real time. There's nothing special that I have to do. So when I have a use query hook on my front end, that then allows me to call a query function I wrote on the server, that's going to read data from the database. Now this in and of itself is good practice because my client, my front end is never allowed to directly interact with the database. I know some backend as a service is allow you to do this. This is a no go in convex. That being said, when I change data in the database, once this use query is set up in my front end, Anytime a change is made in my DB, it will reflect on my front end real time. Everything is in sync. And honestly, that's not all. With Convex, you can write durable functions, whether you want to do scheduled functions, background jobs, workflows, cron jobs, any type of job other than getting a legitimate job works on Convex. So now that you have a basic understanding of the building blocks of Convex, why don't we spin up a project and write some code? Now, the best way to spin up a convex project is to write npm create convex at latest. We're going to hit enter. We're going to call this tutorial. We're going to use tanstack start. We're going to have no auth for now. And this is going to spin up a tanstack start project with a convex setup. So we have our project set up. I'm just going to install all the packages and run npm run dev. I'm going to create a new convex project. I'm going to call it tutorial. We're going to do a cloud deployment and the CLI is going to provision everything, and then I'm going to have localhost 3000 running. Let's open that in a new tab. We see our convex plus tanstack start project set up and ready. So right now, this is our home route. I just cleared out all the code, and we have welcome here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for our convex folder, and we're going to see the files that we have here. Under generated, this is the generated code. We're not going to look into that, but we have my functions here. And in myfunctions.ts, you basically have an example file showing you how you write queries, mutations, and actions, right? So in this case, we have a query right here, a mutation right here, and an action right here. And all these are imported. So now, when I look at list number, which is a query function, the query function takes two arguments. I have args itself, and then I have a handler function. In args, I'm defining the arguments I'm going to pass to the query function. In this case, I'm going to pass count, and this is the value of a number, right? Type safety. And then I have a handler function here, and this is basically where the query implementation happens. In this case, I'm reading data from the numbers table, and then I'm returning the user's information here, and also the total numbers reversed and all that stuff. But what's important here is not the implementation of it, us reading the database and stuff like that. It's for you to realize how simple it is to read data from the database. And all of this is type safe. I just pass in the arguments. I write my handler function. 
I export this and now I can go here and write const and I'll just write response for now equals use query and then I'm going to like copilot take care of everything. So here you can see I used the use query client library that I imported from convex slash react and look at how I call my APIs, my server functions. I go API dot my functions. Remember the file name is my functions dot TS dot list numbers. If I go back to my functions dot TS, that is what the query function is called, right? And then I pass in the argument. In this case, I specified an argument of count number, right? That's the type. So I pass in the number 10. Now, if I go to my homepage and I inspect element, I go to console and I refresh, I get a result of numbers and I get an array of numbers. If I go to my functions.ts, I'm returning this viewer. I don't have auth setup, so I'm just going to remove that. And literally what we're going to do is we're just going to return numbers, right? So this is what we're going to have. And then if I refresh right now, I have an array of numbers. So now I'm just going to list the numbers on the page. And as you can see, all the numbers have been listed. But now let's say I want to add numbers to the database. And just to see our database, I logged in our convex dashboard and I clicked on data and I see a numbers table here. And these are the list of numbers I have. Now, an important question to ask is how was this table created? How did this table exist? If I go under my convex folder and I look, I see a file here called schema.ts. And this is where I define the structure of my table. But notice here, the only thing we've defined is a field value and that's a type number. But then you see underscore ID and underscore creation time. These are things that are that are created by default anytime you specify a table. So these are things we add for you. But right now I've created the value field and this is where numbers are. The numbers are being read from. But now I want to add numbers to this table. How do I do so? I have a mutation function here and this mutation is called add number and an add number. I'm basically adding a number. Its value is a type number. And in the handler function, my mutation implementation, I see that I am inserting in the numbers table this specific value. And then what I'm doing here, I'm just basically logging it. I can return the value if I want to. Sure, we can do that. But this is basically all it takes to add a number to my table or to add data to my database. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run and write a mutation function and copilot took care of that for me. And essentially what I'm doing is I write use mutation. Again, the way I call my API, it's the same here. API dot my functions this time dot add number. And then this add number is a function. So what I'm going to do is copilot again for the rescue. I'm going to in an on click add a random number. And this button is basically going to help me when I click on it, it's going to add a random number. So now if I go here, when I click on this, a random number should be added into my database. Let's see what happens. Notice how the moment I clicked the query updated and we saw a new number just get added. And if I spam this, you'll see that it is instant, right? It is real time. So I have two tabs here. If I click add number here and convex is truly sync, it should update on this tab as well. And as you can see, that's exactly what happens. If we even look at our database, we see that the entries are instant. And this is the beauty of convex. It is real time by default. Queries are cached automatically for you. So you don't even have to worry about that. And this snippet from the docs tell us every client subscription gets updated simultaneously to the same snapshot of the database. Your app always displays the most consistent view of your data. So now let's take a look at actions. Actions are basically what you would use to read data from a third party service or send data to a third party service like a webhook. So arguments, I'm passing nothing. I can if I want to, but I have no need to pass arguments. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm calling an API called random number API.com. And this basically gives me an array of random numbers. I'm going to then extract the data and then I'm going to pass that number to this run mutation. And basically what this run mutation does is it calls my add number mutation. Remember my add number mutation where I pass in the argument count, which is a number and this number gets added to the database. That's essentially what I'm doing in this action. So I'm fetching the data 
right? I'm getting the random number. I'm writing it to the database using this run mutation. And then I can go to the client and call this action using use action the way I would call the mutation. And I have a separate button here. But in this case, all I do on the on click, so when I click the button, all I'm doing is calling this action. This action doesn't need any arguments because all I'm doing is fetching uh, a random number from this API and passing it to this mutation. So when I go back to my page, if I click on call action to add random number, this should work. And as you can see, it does. And even the open tab, the next tab is fully in sync. Now you see, it's not as fast as add random number. And that's because I'm fetching, right? I'm going past the network boundary. I'm fetching data from a third party service, but everything is in sync. Now with Convex, this is just the tip of the iceberg. These are just the basic primitives. There is so much more that you can do, but I wanted to help you get started. So I encourage you to run that NPM create Convex command, spin up a simple project. We have a generous free tier. And once you used to building apps using Convex, you'll never go back. You will be what we call Convex pilled. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let me know what else you want to see. Let me know if you want me to continue these series. I would really appreciate any and all feedback. Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. I will see you in the next one. Peace.